Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on behalf of the congregation, a special welcome to our guests and friends and neighbors and family. Know that your presence enriches this community in so many ways, and we are very glad that you are with us this morning. For today's worship, you will need a few things. You will need bread and wine if you would like to take part in our celebration of Holy Communion, as well as your Advent wreath, as we will be lighting two candles this morning. Also note that during the prayers of the people, actually at any point of today's service, you will be invited to put prayer requests in the chat box. So if you know that you have prayer requests, either joys, thanksgivings, or needs, uh, you can go ahead and put those in the chat box and we will pray for them uh, later in our service. This Sunday, we get to experience an Advent Lessons in Carol service. So we will hear five stories with five accompanying Advent songs. So get ready to sing. The lessons trace the story of God's salvation through the people of Israel to the Magnificat. So listen for the story of God's love, justice, and comfort that we get to see so clearly in Advent. We begin by lighting our Advent wreath. We light our second Advent candle. At every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O oh, Emmanuel, prepare, prepare us for your coming. We gather together to get ready for what? Only heaven knows. O oh, Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We wait for the day when God will create a prevailing peace on the earth and natural born enemies turn into newborn friends. O oh, Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We get ready for God to come close by laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all our mixed motives. O oh, Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles, whose flames bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. Amen. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. When we stand before God and one another, we do not do so as perfect people. Here in this community, you do not have to hide your brokenness, your shame, your sorrow, or your wounds. Here, you are invited to speak aloud the truth of who you are, and in that speaking, to hear how desperately God loves you. God of grace. 
We come to you as a broken and messy people, unable to heal ourselves. We come to you as a busy and distracted people, unable to see the needs of others. We come to you as a wounded people, wounding others through the things we have done and not done, the things we have said and not said. We confess that we turn away from your love and find it hard to love as you love. We confess that we underrate your forgiveness and overrate our own. We confess that we do not see things in your image. Forgive us for the ways we fail to be your love in the world. Friends in Christ, God already knows, God already sees, and God already loves you and forgives you. You are God's beloved child, and nothing can change that. Let the love of God settle deeply into your bones and turn you to be that love for the world. Amen. Our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We come now to our lessons and carols, and I wanted to say a, a word about it before we begin. Over this season of Advent, during our Wednesday night services, we are focusing on stories of hope. 
For those who were able to join us this past week, you got to hear a story of hope from Patsy, who is our congregational president. Next week, we will hear one from Andrea, our vice president, then from Matthew, our music intern, and the fourth week from our bishop, Mike Reinhardt. These are personal stories near to the heart, and they pick up a number of themes, trauma, discernment and anxiety, sickness and isolation, and grief and loss. But all of them are also ultimately about hope. The thing about hope is that it is specific. It isn't a general vague feeling that we sometimes feel. It is specific and it lives in our stories. That's what you will hear in this story series, how in the everyday challenges of life, hope is specific. It looks like people and communities and unexpected strength and surprising peace. Hope is specific. Today, we get to experience an Advent lessons and carol service. We will hear five lessons read to us, and then we will sing those five lessons back to each other. You are encouraged to sing gustily and with joy. You are also invited to recognize that like the four stories we hear on Wednesday nights, the five stories today together tell God's story. God too has a story to tell about a people that God loves, about God's gentle love and forgiveness, and then finally about hope. In God's story, hope is also specific. Hope is the story of a baby who came to show the world a different way to be, whose story we hear in all of these stories. So this morning, I invite you to listen for God's story. If you listen best by closing your eyes, then close your eyes. If you listen best by following along in your own Bible, then pull out your Bible. If you listen best by watching the reader closely, then watch the reader. However you listen best, I invite you to listen to this story told in five parts. It is a story that never gets old, and it will speak hope, specific hope, into your own story. So listen now for God's story of hope, told in different translations and through different speakers. We begin our story in Isaiah. The first story, God comforts God's people. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11. A summary. God summons voices to speak comfort to Jerusalem, for her term of hard service has ended. Everything prepares for the coming of God. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the valleys, level off the hills, smooth out the ruts, clear out the rocks. Then God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God has said. A voice says, shout. I said, what shall I shout? These people are nothing but grass. Their love fragile as wallflowers. The grass withers, the wildflowers fade. If God so much as puffs on them, aren't these people just so much grass? True, the grass withers and the wildflowers fade, but our God's word stands firm and forever. Climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of good news. Raise your voice. Make it good and loud, Jerusalem. You're the preacher of good news. Speak loud and clear. 
don't be timid. Tell the cities of Judea, look, your God. Look at him. God, the master, comes in power, ready to go into action. He is going to pay back his enemies and reward those who have loved him. Like a shepherd, he will care for his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms, hugging them as he carries them, leading the nursing ewes to good pasture. Comfort, comfort now my people, tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's load. To God's people now proclaim that God's pardon waits for them. Tell them that their war is over, God will reign in peace forever. For the herald's voice is crying in the desert far and near, calling us to true repentance since the reign of God is here. Oh, that warning cry obey, now prepare for God away. Valleys rise to greet the Savior, hills bow down in humble favor. Straight shall be what long was crooked, and the rougher places plain. Let your hearts be true and humble, as befits God's holy reign. For the glory of the Lord now on earth is shed abroad, and all flesh shall see the token that God's word is never broken. Our second, in our second story, God promises a king from Isaiah 9, 2 to 7. Here a summary of the reading. A new king shall rule Judah with justice and righteousness. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar on, across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us. A son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Yes, that's all good.
The third story, The King Will Come from Bethlehem, a reading from Micah, chapter five, verse two through five, a summary. A new king will come from Bethlehem, the home of David, to rule justly over the nation. The ancient promises will again be restored. Micah was a prophet. He spoke to the people for God. During the time when Micah was alive, God's people were afraid. They felt sad and hopeless. God sent Micah to the people of Bethlehem, one of the smallest groups of God's people, with some unbelievable news. This is the good news that Micah announced to God's people. From you, little Bethlehem, will come a wonderful leader for the whole world. He will be like a good shepherd who loves and takes care of each sheep in his flock. He will take care of all people, especially those who need extra help. All God's people will be safe with this leader because he will lead with peace and fairness. He will be the greatest leader the world has ever seen. There is hope. Live with hope, you, you people of Bethlehem. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. His rest, strength, and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. The fourth story, John the Baptist, Mark 1, 1 through 8, the message. The summary of this morning's reading. The good news begins with the witness of two prophetic texts from Malachi and Isaiah that announce a forerunner, John the Baptist, who will go before the coming of God's Messiah. A message. God will go ahead of you, Malachi 3, 1. One who will prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Isaiah 43. The good news of Jesus Christ, the message, begins here to the letter of the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Watch closely. I'm sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you. Thunder in the desert. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, 
and as they were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locust and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, action comes next. The star in this drama, I'm a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your own life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. The fifth story, the Annunciation and Magnificent. Our reading is from Luke 1. The ep a summary is, the angel of Angel Gabriel's Annunciation to Mary and her impending pregnancy and the birth of Jesus follows the introductory story of the angel's announcement of the birth of John to Zachariah's elderly wife, Elizabeth, and her pregnancy. After this, Mary will immediately visit Elizabeth, the visitation, and will deliver her famous Magnificent on that occasion. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb a bear and bear a son and will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be, no, will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy, and will be the Son of God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. 
Then the angel departed from her. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord, I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. To all who live in holy fear, your mercy ever flows. With mighty arm you dash the proud, their scheming hearts expose. The ruthless you have cast aside, the lowly throned instead. The hungry filled with all good things, the rich sent off unfed. To Israel your servant blessed, your help is ever sure. The promise to our parents made, their children will secure. Sing glory to the Holy One, give honor to the Word, and praise the power of the Most High, one God by all adored. Let us continue by repeating with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayers. You are invited to put any prayer requests that you might have in the chat box. These can be joys and thanksgivings from the week, or these might be needs and sorrows. So go ahead and fill up that chat box as we pray. On this second Sunday of Advent, let us pray for this weary world, responding to each petition with words from today's first reading. Comfort, O oh comfort, your people. Come to us, O oh eternal God, as you came to the saints. We remember especially Saint Nicholas in his care for children and for all children around the world, including the babies, children, youth, and youth adults of Zion. We pray for the Zion Preschool, for Travis Elementary, and for all families struggling with difficult choices and limited resources. Bring with them through our wilderness into the fulfillment of your promises. Oh God, be gracious to us. Comfort, oh comfort your people. 
come to the Jewish people, O covenant law God, at this their festival of Hanukkah, in the world's anti-Semitists, and bring peace to Jerusalem. O God, be gracious to us. Comfort, O comfort your people. Come to the earth, O creating God. As the seasons change, protect all that lives. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems. O God, be gracious to us. Comfort, O comfort your people. Come to the nations, O sovereign God. Inspire governmental officials to strive for peace within their land and between countries. Remember the people of Afghanistan and Ethiopia. Guide the nations to cooperative efforts when facing global issues. O oh God, be gracious to us. Comfort, O oh comfort your people. Come to all who suffer. O oh, merciful God, empower us to feed the hungry in our nation and around the world. Gather into your healing, embrace those who are afraid, lonely, sick, or struggling with depression. Please pray especially for Helmuth, Agnes, Kathy, Ellie, Jean, Harold, Nora, Irene, Lynette, Tina, Marion, Margie, and the family of Jim. Oh God, be gracious to us. Comfort, oh comfort your people. Come, oh tender hearted God, to each one of us and receive now these prayers. for the Audibert family and for Wanda, for the family of Josh, prayers for healing for Bing, who is dealing with severe health issues. Gratitude, grateful thanks for the safe travel and return of Lori and John, healing and comfort for Nick. Come with beauty, heavenly stars and gentle nature. Pray for Dory's Aunt Joyce as her feeding tube will be removed today. Prayers for our family as we grieve a soon loss and celebrate her life. The joy of our granddaughter Ryan in our lives. Pray for all friends who are having hard times, health issues, and loneliness during this pandemic. For those who suffer in this cold weather, that the light of the coming of Christ will warm their nights and that they will be kept safe from the elements and fed by their neighbors. For Ruth Ann's sister and her nephew. O oh God, be gracious to us. Comfort, O oh comfort your people. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to our time of offering and just a reminder that there are three ways to give at Zion. The first is through a check mailed into the church office. The address is there on the screen. The second is through uh, the Tithely mobile app. And the third is through Zion's website. Uh, and just a reminder that also for the month of December, November and December, our benevolence will go to the Fisher House Foundation. So if you'd like to give toward the Fisher House Foundation, just make a note of this on your check. We come now to our meal. And just a note that all are welcome in this meal of grace. You will need to gather either bread and crackers or wine and juice to take part, but know that you are very welcome to do that. We begin with our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, and give thanks for your rich blessings, 
we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. You are invited to receive the bread and wine with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now that you have tasted the goodness of God in bread and wine, let us be the body of Christ, blessed and broken for the whole world. Amen. We come now to our closing hymn, The King Shall Come. The King shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks. When beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy awakes. Not as of old a little child to bear and fight and die, but crowned with glory like the sun that lights the morning sky. O oh, brighter than the rising morn, when Christ victorious rose, and left the lonesome place of death, despite the rage of foes. O oh, brighter than that glorious morn, shall dawn upon our race, the day when Christ in splendor comes, and we shall see his face. 
The king shall come when morning dawns, and light and beauty brings. Hail Christ the Lord, your people pray, come quickly, King of kings. Uh, actually, we are going to do announcements first, and then we'll come to our first Sunday celebration. So, Michael, if you will pop us out of the PowerPoint, I'll start with a few announcements. If anyone else has announcements, you are also welcome to unmute uh, so that we can hear those announcements. The first one I have, uh, join us on Wednesday night. Uh, we had a lovely first Advent Wednesday evening um, last Wednesday. So 6.30, uh, pick a suit from the list or Pick your own soup and come and join us. Uh, tell us how it, tell us how good it is. At seven o'clock, we start holding the evening prayer, and then we pause in the middle to hear a story. Uh, this week, it is Andrea's story, um, so tune in for that. Um, and then you are welcome to stay on for a bit afterwards and share uh, what you heard, uh, which is a, which is a really lovely time of sharing. So join us Wednesday night, six thirty soup, seven o'clock, uh, hold an evening prayer. Um, I also wanted to get on your radar screen that we are going to be doing cookie baking for our homebound members. Um, so right now we have about 13 that are within driving distance of the church. So we're looking for uh, some, vol some volunteers. First, we need cookie bakers uh, for you to bake a batch of 13 cookies. Um, so if you can do that, let us know. We also need drivers, uh, so six teams to take them to different parts of the city. Um, and if you aren't able to do either of those, uh, you're also welcome to be a flower sponsor. We'd like to deliver poinsettias to our homebound members. This will be December 20th, right after church. We'll meet at the church to pick up the poinsettias and to pick up the cookies. Uh, so if you know that you can be a part of that, that this is a lovely way uh, to be in service to our homebound members at a tough time of the year to be alone. Uh, send us a note and we will get you connected with one of those jobs or all of those jobs. My final announcement is a note that the advisory board is meeting this Thursday at six o'clock by Zoom. Um, and this includes old members and new members. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? I don't see any hands waving. Uh, so why don't we do our first Sunday celebrations? So if you have a celebration in the month of December, if you have a birthday, a graduation, an anniversary, um, an anniversary of uh, sobriety, any type of significant event for you that comes in the month of December, why don't you unmute and tell us about it and let us cheer you on. Does anyone have a, a December celebration? We do. Go ahead, Karen and Arnie. Uh, first one is our granddaughter, youngest granddaughter, is graduating from A&M Galveston uh, this coming weekend, virtual. We won't be able to do anything. <laughs> but anyway, she's graduating with a degree in marine biology and uh, doesn't know what she's going to do, but she's graduating. And also, uh, Arnold and son-in-law Randy have a birthday on the 16th of December, hmm. same day. Oh, nice. Arnie, what, uh, what birthday is this for you? Are you willing to be loud and proud about your birthday? 83. 83. Happy birthday, Arnie. He's old. <laughs> <laughs> old is a state of mind and Arnie is not there. All right. Happy birthday. Who else? Uh, Kim and Ryan, I see you over there. Go ahead. So we'll contrast that. Our daughter Charlotte turns one the day after Christmas. And um, we will do a virtual cake smash for anyone who would like to dial in and, and maybe have a cupcake of your own to celebrate with her. Lovely. Happy birthday to Charlotte. That first year is, is always so exciting and hard. Uh, who else has a December uh, celebration? I understand you do. Are you, are you pointing to me? Yes, Pastor Mindy. Yes, I do have a birthday. I do. I do have a birthday this month and I turned the big 4-0 uh, two days before Christmas. So I'll celebrate with you all at an Advent. Uh, an Advent. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Virginia and Ray Dietrich have a wedding anniversary on December 1st. Oh, lovely. How many years, Virginia? 63. 
63. Congratulations. Thank you. Who else for December? Looking for some hands or you can just unmute yourself if I don't see you. Any other December celebrations? Well, great. Well, happy birthday, happy anniversary um, to, to all those in December. Uh, uh, Pastor, I just had a, just so kind of going back to an annou the announcements phase, uh, John Body had shared a uh, national um, men and mission group with me last week. And I just wanted to share with anybody else that would be interested here. Um, we meet every Thursday uh, on a Zoom call from uh, starting at 7 p.m. So if, if anybody's interested, I'll, I'll send that information to, to you. If you could send that over to anybody else, that'd be great. You bet. Yeah, if you send it in, we'll get it in the uh, weekly announcements and folks can see it. Thank you, Ryan. That's a great one. Any other announcements? Well, I wanted to say a huge thank you to our musicians. As you could tell, this service was a feat for them using piano, violin, organ, song, lots of different singers. Uh, it was just lovely. I love a good musical Advent service. So our thanks to all of them for all of the work in this tricky time uh, that they do to give us such beautiful music. Thank you to our musicians. There's nothing else. We will do our final blessing. Receive this blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will. Please share the peace with one another. Peace. Peace, peace. everyone.